Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. Today is uh, Friday, March 2nd and I am Lisbeth, your host. And uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, well, <laughs> this is a podcast about uh, knitting, occasionally sewing and other crafts. Um, for now I think I've only had uh, knitting and sewing. Um, and I would like to start talking uh, about this with you uh, right away. So today I will start with what I am wearing and that is my um, interlock sweater. Uh, this is a sweater that I uh, knit last year. Again, uh, the yarn for this project was one of my Edinburgh Yarn Festival um, purchases. I think it's the Travel Knitter DK yarn in seven different colors and I can't remember all of the colorways but there's a project page on Ravelry, although I think this project may still be called um, a design project because I was intending on writing up the pattern for this sweater because I knit it once before in two types of grey and then uh, I, yeah, I've knit this sweater again for myself and then I've also knit some sweater like this for my mom uh, in a different size because she has a slightly different size than me um, but I figured it doesn't really work to scale up this pattern so I could maybe make available the sizes that I have worked out at the moment but I feel like it, it would be too much work and probably very disappointing for a lot of knitters to knit something that you know, or follow a pattern that just doesn't work like they would want a sweater pattern to work there. Um, due to the fact that it's interlocked, there's very limited options for, for instance, doing waist shaping and stuff like that. So if you don't have like the right type of figure, it, it might not work at all for you, which is kind of disappointing. So I am considering just putting out the pattern part that I have for now uh, for free, because I feel like you can't expect the entire world to fit in one or two sizes. That That's just not how the world uh, works. So, um, well, you will probably see that coming sometime soon. So, um, this is the Travel Knitter DK Interlock uh, sweater in seven lovely rainbowy uh, colors. Well, six rainbow colors, and then there's this gray. I think it's London Skies. I'm I'm not really sure. So, uh, what have I been up to uh, crafting wise this week? Well, you probably expect me to <laughs> have been working on these socks. Yes, I have, but I did not get very far. You can see that I've started working on the gusset here, but that's basically uh, all I did because I uh, think this is um, a project that really needs some brain power to work on. And I did not have a lot of that this week. I've been very busy and um, Basically, all of my energy has been <laughs> drained by it. So, well, I started working on my master thesis this week, and uh, as much as it is fun, it is also very much exhausting. So, when I get home in the evening, I just don't have brain space to start working on something color work because then I need to focus on both the pattern and controlling two yarns, and it's it's just a bit too much. Um, and that said. Um, I did work a little bit on another color work project, so all of the brain space that I <laughs> did have over to do something like that uh, was in the uh, two hats that I have made this week. And these are, well, I'll just put them on. This is supposed to be my BB8 hat. Uh, you can see the color work is not really very nice. Year because I had to carry the floats for quite some time and um, this pattern I think there was a free pattern on Ravelry available but I'm not really sure whose it was and uh, I adapted it quite a lot to um, make it work for the size that I wanted to knit so this is going to be a hat for my sister 
and it's supposed to look like uh, like a Star Wars robot, I think, BB-8. And then um, there, there's these kind of things. I have four of them now, and I think three are for this head, and there, uh, there needs to be a second one for for the other head that I'm using. They need to go somewhere. Like I, I can't see what I'm doing, but I'll just put it here and hope that it's not completely ridiculous but these are supposed to be like sensors or cameras or whatever that the robot has on its head so there, there will be something to cover up this uh, <laughs> less neat space of uh, color work I guess and of course I also need to weave in all the ends and, and things like that but um, yes <laughs> that, that has been uh, one part that I've been working on and then there's the second uh, hat that I have knit, and it's is for my sister's boyfriend. Uh, this one is supposed to look something like R2-D2. Um, yeah, <laughs> another robot-like figure in uh, Star Wars. For all the fans, if they are not robots but anything else, I'm sorry, I think they are robots. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so... That's another hat finished. I did a slightly better job on weaving in the ends on this one yet, although I still have to trim uh, the ends that I've uh, woven in. Uh, yeah, so I th I think they will be happy with uh, these two hats, but um, they still need a little bit of finishing and at this point it's very early in the morning and um, my sister will be coming to stay over for the weekend uh, this week later today um, so I hope to have them finished at least before she leaves uh, that would be uh, a lot of fun so uh, w one other thing that took away a lot of crafting time for me this week is I do have pets they are pet durables so if you, if you don't know what they are uh, well, I'd say Google it, uh, but yeah, they are uh, tiny rodents and I've been cleaning out their cages. But they have quite large cages, so I don't need to clean them very often. Of course, there's tiny bits of cleaning that needs to be done every now and then, but they're pretty clean animals and um, like cleaning out their entire cage only has to be done like once every three months or so. Well, <laughs> this week was fun week, so I spend a lot of time cleaning uh, their cages. I have several of them, so uh, this takes a little bit of time. I will probably put a, put a picture of them somewhere here if I manage to do that with editing. Uh, one of my pets also celebrated his fourth birthday this uh, week, um, which is co quite special because on average they get like three to three and a half years old and uh, Mine uh, turned four this week, so I'm very proud of him, and he's still doing very good. So I hope that maybe he will uh, reach his fifth birthday next uh, year. We will see. Um, so then there's uh, two more projects that I've been working on, so I think this is going to be a rather short episode. And one of them, of course, is my blanket. I still have a Thursday evening project, although this time I did not work on it Thursday evening because... Um, the yarn for the hats also came from the shop, so I've been working on the the tiny details for uh, the R2-T2 and the BB-8 hat. Um, but I've been working on this square, and I think I've shown you this square the previous time, only it was a lot smaller at that time. I think I was somewhere in the black section, maybe? Um, well, it has grown quite significantly, but it's still not a finished uh, border square. You can see that I'm on a purple now, on a purple section. And this will be the final section of the square, then it will be kind of square, and then it can go in the border. But I intend to keep it loose for now, and I will like make smaller parts from which I can also work the center squares, I think. I will keep it into a fourth of the entire blanket. I think that will make it slightly easier to carry around uh, a part of my blanket. So I've been working on the blanket. There's some progress going on. It's slow, but it's 
it's there. So it's going to get finished at some point in the probably not too near future. And here is the very exciting sock that I've started knitting for my boyfriend. Yeah. Yes, this is a sock that is no longer a sock. Um, I started knitting um, this at my office at the university. So if I have a break or if I'm reading something or whatever, if I have a little bit of... Uh, well, if I, if I really need to fiddle with my hands to stay focused or something, I will pick up my knitting for a short while and start knitting. And I think what I've knit this week was only the equivalent of maybe an hour's knitting there. Um, but I started knitting a pair of socks for him uh, out of this, uh, I think it's Regia yarn. And um, yeah. Uh, I started knitting it on uh, wooden DPNs and I felt like this sock is turning out way too big. It, this this doesn't seem right. I, I know socks always seem to look kind of funny when you start working on them and they were throw up. So it's uh, right from the beginning it's very important that it fits of course. I mean if you have a slightly looser cuff I think you might be able to work around. So. But if you start from the toe up, there's no way you're going to get away with it being far too loose in, in the beginning. And I started uh, working from the toe up and it was too loose. And then I figured maybe maybe I can see what it what it happens if I start working on it on uh, circular needles. So these are also two millimeter uh, circular needles. Uh, I don't know what brand they are but yeah I I thought these are also wooden or bamboo needles they're this they're supposed to be the same size so maybe it doesn't affect the gauge too much but I need like four rounds on on these needles and I could really see that the fabric was turning out a lot tighter than on the DPNs that I was using there and I thought, no, this is not going to work. Uh, so I just ripped out the entire toe and the bit that I knit after the toe and decided to start over. But I did not get to starting over yet. So that's why my sock currently looks like skin. <laughs> because uh, there, really, there is no sock. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm a bit of a perfect perfectionist in that sense that uh, if it's not going to work, I'm not going to try everything to make it still kind of work. Uh, it, especially if I'm not that far ahead, I, just, I will just rip back and make it something that I am sure will work. Uh, yeah. Um, you may not have seen uh, this yarn before and uh, that's because it's a new uh, purchase. It's not very special. I know it's just a, a, a blue blue yarn, a blue regia, solid color. I, I think it's not very exciting to most people. But when I was working on the uh, R2-D2 hat for my sister's boyfriend, um, I noticed that I did not have the right color of blue. Well, I was talking about the R2-D2 hat that I knit last week and uh, I had shown you a uh, very dark navy blue last week. Um, but I, it was too dark uh, to work for this project. So I had to purchase another skein of yarn and this is Katja Merino. Merino something. I have a label here somewhere. It's here. Let me get it. Katja Merino Sport and it has a color and it's color 27 if I can read that correctly through the label and from the wrong side um, but I thought this blue is much better for the hat uh, as I've shown you um, but I had to purchase this from another shop online also to have it here in time to be able to work on it but also uh, the shop that I uh, usually go to my local yarn short store which I really like to support did not offer any 
any other merino yarn in approximately the same thickness that had uh, a lighter blue color so I uh, went for this online shop and then I did not want to pay the shipping cost for just one skein of yarn and I mean if if I order some kind of indie dyed yarn like something very special then okay it's perfectly fine then the shipping costs do not exceed like the costs of my yarn and also if it's international shipping then I can totally understand that I have to pay more for it even though the shipping costs do often hold me back from ordering yarn no, not only the shop shopping costs but also the environmental impacts uh, as much as I like uh, American yarns or Canadian yarns or wherever on the world <laughs> from yarns that are not like from within uh, well, the Netherlands or quite close to the Netherlands, then I, I usually want to buy it. Um, but because I was ordering this one skein, I thought, let's see if they have anything else that's interesting in their shop. Because uh, for, uh, I discussed last week that I was interested in buying, for instance, the short circulars. Um, but the shop also did not have the short circular, so I saw sock yarn and I saw it in these three colors. They are all on the darker side of blue to me, not very special, all yeah, regia um, or regia maybe. Um, and uh, I will use these to knit socks for my boyfriend, so I bought two skeins of each color and then um, I, I will be able to make a pair out of each set of skeins um, and maybe I will have some left over to put some contrast uh, color details on other socks I, I don't know but for now it's just a plan to make him some plain stockinette uh, socks in three different blue colors because he really loves his blues and uh, I think for him it's almost best if their so his socks are just very plain and simple. So that's fine and especially if I can knit them like in the times that I don't have much print space to do anything intricate is perfect. Um, yeah, so I think that is it for today. Uh, it, I think it's a bit of a short episode but that's well <laughs> for logical reasons to me, I've been very busy and I've also been busy with preparing for my birthday, which is this Sunday. Um, I will turn 27 and, um, and there will be some friends coming over and my family will be coming over this weekend. So I think maybe next week will be a shorter episode. Again, we will see, um, but there will definitely be less time for knitting and sewing and everything. Um, and probably also podcast editing. I don't know when that is going to happen, but we will see. So thanks so much for joining me. It really means a lot to me that you have taken some time uh, to join me. And um, there's a, a lot of other places that you can find me. But most importantly, you can find me on Ravelry as Lady12, on Instagram as Knitting Teaspoon. And I think there's an underscore order it will be on the screen i will just rely on the screen and if you would like to contact me um uh through email uh, my email address is knitting teaspoon at gmail.com so thanks again for joining me today and uh so <laughs> bye